Hello everyone, welcome back to Nitrate Engineering. Today we are doing yet another question on nozzles, power machines and six. The exercise that we are doing is an exercise that I've taken from a question paper that was written on August 2019. It's question number five and it reads as follow. A gas expand through a convergent divergent nozzle at a rate of 181 kilogram per minute to an actual temperature of 221 degrees Celsius. The nozzle efficiency is 89% while the drop pressure is 1581 kilopascal. The isoentropic temperature drop through the nozzle is 298 degrees Celsius. Take gamma for air as 1.4 and R for air as 0.288 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. Ignore the velocity of the gas at the inlet and calculate the following quantities. For uh, 5.1, at the nozzle inlet, we are dealing with the inlet. They say the absolute temperature of the gas. And then the second one, they say the pressure of the gas in kilopascal. 5.2, the value of the specific heat capacity at constant pressure for the gas. And then... Uh, 5.3 at the throat of the nozzle we're dealing with the throat of the nozzle now they say the absolute temperature of the gas the velocity of the gas in meters per second the specific volume of the gas and then 5.4 we're dealing now with the nozzle exit they say the absolute isoentropic temperature of the gas the velocity of the gas in meters per second so this is the information that we are given we are dealing with a convergent divergent nozzle we are given the pressure at the truth only the pressure at the truth we are given the mass as 181 kilogram per minute we're given efficiency as 89 percent and then we are given the isoentropic temperature drop this is the isoentropic temperature drop meaning it's the temperature drop not taking into consideration the efficiency of the <coughs> of the nozzle and then we have gamma and then we have r and then again to this isoentropic temperature drop i want to point out that we are given the temperature drop temperature drop is the same as saying it's the temperature difference and we know since we are given 298 it doesn't mean that if we want to convert this to maybe degrees Celsius, we have to add two, we have to minus two, seven, three. No, it's the temperature difference. Even if you are dealing with Kelvins, even if you are dealing with degrees Celsius, the difference will be the same. So we are going to use it as it is, even if we are dealing with Kelvins, even if we are dealing with temper, uh, degrees Celsius. So we are going to start with the questions 5.1. They say at the nozzle inlet, the absolute temperature of the gas. We're going to use the adiabatic efficiency to calculate for this one. That's T1 minus T2, which is the actual temperature. Taking into consideration the efficiency, T1 minus T2 prime. This is the ISO and peak temperature we are looking for t1 so we are going to substitute 0 0.89 is equals to t1 that's what we're looking for minus t2 it's we're told about the actual temperature of two to an actual temperature of we're given the actual temperature is two two one degrees Celsius. We convert it to Kelvin, and it is four nine six Kelvin. The temperature difference here, which is the isoentropic temperature difference, we are already given. So there is no need for us to convert to to say um, T one minus T two prime. We are already given the difference or the drop, which will be like this. The only unknown now is T one. We are going to calculate for T one, and I got that it is equals to seven five nine. 0.22 Kelvin and then we go to the second one 
they say the pressure of the gas in kilopascal pressure of the gas we want p1 and then we know we can get p1 in the formula to calculate for uh temporary for the pressure at the trough because we do we do have the temper the pressure at the trough so we can use this formula it will be t it's two gamma minus one raised to gamma divided by gamma minus one it's positive yeah and then we substitute we have this one five eight one we do not have this two gamma we're given as one point four <coughs> minus one 1.4 mm, uh, 1.4 one. <coughs> so the only unknown in our equation now it's the p1 that we are looking for we've solved for that and then i got that it is equals to 2992.721 kilo pascal and then we go to 5.2 5.2 they say the value of a cp for a gas we're looking for the specific capacity at constant pressure we know there are two formulas main two formulas that we can get our cp from first one is the formula to calculate for r we have r it is equal to cp minus cv we do not have this cv but we do have another formula to calculate for where we can get this uh, CP, which is the, v, the the formula to calculate gamma, it still includes CV. We do not have this CV, and we have it in both formulas. So we are going to say, let's make CV the subject of the formula. We are going to have CP minus R, which will be our equation number one, and then we are going to make CP the subject of the formula here again, CV rather, and it's given by CP ma divided by C by gamma by gamma and then that will be our number two therefore this tells us that cp minus r it's equals to cp divided by r by gamma it's not r it's gamma and then from here we are going to make r the subject of the formula and then we will end up with cp minus cp divided by gamma we have this and we have this meaning the only unknown in this equation is the cp that we are trying to calculate for let's substitute 0 0.8288 so equals to cp that one it's what we are trying to get minus cp and then our gamma is 1.4 yeah uh, get another paper and then from here we're going to say 0 0.288 is equals to combine these two it will be cp minus 1.4 it will be 1.4 rather minus cp divided by we make it the lowest common denominator and then from here we are going to say 0 0.288 times 1.4 it's equals to minus here we are going you will be left with 0 0.4 cp and then cp being our only unknown we are going to get 1.008 kilojoules per kg kelvin and then we go to 5.3 they say at the trough of the nozzle now we are dealing with the trough of the nozzle 5.3.1 the absolute temperature of the gas at the trough we know temperature is what tc given by t1 in bracket 2 gamma plus 1 which we are going to substitute 
T1 we already have it is we calculated on the first question that's our T1 this up T1 it is 7 59.22 <coughs> times 2 gamma 1.4 plus 1 that will give us our TC as 0.683 it's Kelvin go to the next question 5.3.2 they say the velocity of the gas in meters per second we are dealing with the drop we know that it is C C it's given by 2 times cp times 10 to the power 3 in bracket t1 minus tc it's 2 times our cp we already calculated for a 0 0.008 times 10 to the power 3 what is our t1 our t1 is equals to 75 75 9.22 minus TC which is 632.683 in close bracket and then we are going to get our velocity here as being equals to 505 0.0729 meters per second and then we go to the next one they say the specific volume of the gas specific volume of the gas we can get using 5.3.83 we can get using what mrt it's equals to pv They said the specific volume, meaning our M, it's equals to 1 kg. Want the volume? C, it's C, it's C. This would be given by what? M, R, T, C, P, C. 1 times 0 0.8288. T, C, it's equals to... 632.683 and then our um, pressure it's 1581 which will give us the specific volume as 0 0.115 meter cubed per kg its specific volume and then we are done with the drop we go to 5.4 Question number one, they say it's at the um, nozzle exit. We're dealing with the exit. They say the absolute isoentropic temperature of the gas. Isoentropic temperature, it's the T2 that is not taking into consideration the, um, the efficiency of the machine that we're dealing with. So it will be two, T2 prime and it will be given by T1 minus remember we're already given the temperature drop the isoentropic temperature drop so we're going to say since now we have t1 as 759 minus this that will give us the isoentropic temperature absolute the absolute isoentropic temperature of the gas which will be 461.22 kelvin and then we go to the last one. They say 5.2.2. So uh, 5.4.2. The velocity of the gas in meters per second. Velocity of the gas is given by CC. It's equals to 2 times CP times 10 to the power 3. In bracket, T1 minus T2 is T, C2 here. Have everything here. We have two. We have 1.008 times 10 to the power 3 times T1. 
it's seven five nine point two two minus four nine four close bracket and then our answer is given by we get that it's seven three one point two two one meters per second and then that is how we go about answering this particular question and that wrap up our um, nozzles power machines and things